The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What does that mean to fear the Lord? To fear the Lord means to be scared to disobey God, right? Just like, you know, when you're driving uh, down the highway and, and you see a, a police officer maybe behind you or in front of you, you slow down, right? Because you're scared that you might get pulled over and get a ticket. Well, the fear of the Lord means that you take caution to avoid doing evil. The Bible says that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The living God. See, God is alive. He's watching everything that we do. He's watching me right now as I'm uh, preaching His Word on this video. <clears throat> He's watching everything I say, everything I think, every thought that goes through my mind. See, the problem is many people live their lives today without the fear of God. They think, oh, there is no God. He's not watching me. It doesn't matter what I, you know, what I say and what I do. As long as I don't get caught by the government, I'm fine. You know, and they, and, they, and they believe that there is no God. There is no God watching them. Or, or, or they believe a false God, some, some God that's not of the Bible, not the one true God, not the Lord Jesus Christ. So they live their lives without fear, without the fear of God, no wisdom at all. And they become fools, what the Bible says. Even though, you know, these people, they may have a good job. They may look good. They may seem like they have it all, right? But what they don't have is the fear of the Lord. And the Bible calls them fools. <laughs> Greetings, friends. It's Sean Elvis. Good to see you today. It's a beautiful day here in Denver. Uh, no clouds in the sky. So I love to be preaching nothing more than uh, God's Word today. And in today's video, I'm going to be discussing a little bit about wisdom and the difference between wisdom and foolishness. You know, what is wisdom? You know, how do we obtain wisdom? And, you know, what are we supposed to do with wisdom when we get it? I want you guys to think of these questions while I'm talking about this video. And I, and, and I want you to think of the wisest person you know. And I want you to think, you know, what makes this person so wise? Why do you think they're so wise of a person? Is it because of all the money they have, material things they have? Maybe an accomplishment that they've accomplished. What exactly about them makes you believe that they're wise? What is wisdom? Wisdom, if you look it up in the dictionary, simply means the correct use of knowledge. The correct use of knowledge. Well, what is knowledge? Knowledge simply means to understand or to perceive the truth. Or, or the facts, right? So knowledge is you understand the facts. You can comprehend it. You can understand it. And one plus one is two, right? But wisdom means what do you do with that information? What do you do with the facts that one plus one is two, right? So wisdom is, is not only knowing the truth, but it's applying the truth in the correct way, okay? So... Too many people today, and the reason I'm making this video are, you know, they're, they're fools, right? They're just fools. They don't, they don't understand the Bible. They don't care to understand the Bible and, and, and let alone uh, obey the Bible, right? So the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. So God is not going to excuse anybody for their lack of knowledge. And he says that we're destroyed for our lack of knowledge. And, he's, and if we reject the Bible, God's going to reject us. Now, uh, where does knowledge and understanding come from? You know, because our, our brains are limited. 
You know, we don't, nobody's all-knowing. Even, even the greatest minds who have ever existed, you know, you think of Albert Einstein or Thomas Edison, you know, they've invented all these great inventions and they're, they're brilliant minds. But even their minds were limited to just the knowledge that they had at that time. You know, and even science, even science today can't prove anything 100%. Even the scientific method cannot be scientifically proven. You know, so there's always a level of doubt, at least some level of doubt. It might be some levels of doubt are bigger or smaller, but we can never be 100% know the 100% truth. This is why the Bible is so important, because it's written by God. It's not written by man, so we know that God knows everything. God's all-knowing. He knows the truth, and He wrote us the Bible to give us the truth because we don't know everything. Right? That's why the Bible is to believe, be believed based on faith, because everything's based on faith. But the Bible, you can count on it, because it was written by somebody who knows everything. Who does know the truth. And that's why He gave us the truth, so we could know, we can be confident in that, hey, this Bible is the sure Word of God. It's the truth, 100%. There's nothing else, everything else in the world I have to question, but at least the Word of God, I know is true because it was written by somebody who knows everything, and that's God. You know, there are many things that science can't explain. You know, for example, uh, the planet Venus in the sky, or, in, you know, in the atmosphere, in the universe, we can't explain why every other planet twirls clockwise, but Venus is turning, is turning counterclockwise. It's unexplainable by science. Science can't explain it. I think God did that just just to show us how powerful he is and how, hey, you guys can't explain everything. I'm God. You need to rely on me for your understanding. You know, another example is, <laughs> why can't women decide, ever decide what they want to eat? <laughs> it's unexplainable by science. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. But seriously, you know, the Bible says that in Hosea, that we're destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? Because we're not getting our knowledge from the Bible. Um, and in the, ab- in the absence of knowledge, you know, we're going to destroy ourselves. But you know what's worse than not having knowledge and being destroyed for lack of it? It's when you have knowledge and you choose to reject it and you apply it just correctly. Like if I explain to you one plus one is two and then you went on and said, no, no, no. I'm going to believe one plus one is three. Well, then what would you be? You'd be a fool. That's what the Bible says. If you know the truth, you reject the truth, then you're a fool. If, if I tell you what the Bible says, I tell you, hey, the Bible says you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you say, nah, I'm going to put my faith somewhere else, you're a fool. That's what the Bible says. And that's what we have in our days now, and that's what we have in our world nowadays is a bunch of fools. You know, the Bible says... Uh, that if you know about Jesus, you know He resurrected from the dead. You, I'm telling you that the Bible says He died for your sins on the cross. You need to believe in Him. You need to have fear, fear of God. And, and you reject that, even though after I explained it to you, after I told you about it, you're a fool. Because I told you what the truth is. You understood it, and you still rejected it. I want you to open up your Bible, if you have a King James Bible, turn to uh, the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Mark, St. Mark chapter 4, we're going to be in St. Mark chapter 4 today, and you know, we're going to read a short lesson that Jesus taught, you know, but before I read that uh, lesson, I want to share a few scriptures with you, Psalms uh, Psalms chapter uh, 111 verses 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. See, if you want to be wise, it begins by fearing the Lord. Again, it's reiterated in the Bible, all over the Bible. You see, a wise person is not only going to learn the Bible, read the Bible, but they're going to obey the commandments that they read in it. You know, because, you know, God, he's, He's so much smarter than us, you know. He knows the truth. We don't know the truth. 
He knows everything. That's why we need to listen to Him. We need to understand His commandments. And you know, sometimes we may read something in the Bible. We don't understand why God said to do this. But we're wise if we do it anyway because we can't lean on our own understanding because we don't know everything, right? God told us what's right and wrong. And if we want to be wise, it begins by fearing the Lord and understanding that, hey, the Lord's more powerful than me, right? God is more powerful than all of us. So we better do what He says, right? And, and the good news is God's not going to tell us to do anything that's bad for us anyways, right? So if, if, you, if you read something, you don't understand it, it just, it just means you need to uh, ask God for more understanding. Hey, God, I understand you said this. I'm going to obey this, but can you help me understand why you said this? Why is this the right thing to do? Um, Job chapter 28, verse 28 says, Unto man he said, and this is God speaking, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Again, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is wisdom. You know, too many people think, why should I be scared of someone I never met? Or be scared of something that I can't prove scientifically, right? I can't prove God's real. Therefore, I'm not going to believe it. But the Bible says the fear of the Lord is uh is wisdom. You know, only a fool would question God. You don't believe me? Psalms chapter 14 verse 1 says, The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. The fool says there is no God. So if you want to be wise, the first thing you're going to have to do is fear the Lord. How are you going to fear the Lord? Well, first you have to believe that He exists. You have to understand that, hey, how else did anything be created? How did I get created? Because of God. God created all things. And you need to fear that powerful creator, that all-knowing, all-powerful creator. Well, okay, let's say, okay, Sean, I believe God, I believe the Bible, you know, I have a little bit of knowledge, but what if I want more wisdom? I want to learn more, Sean. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. So we can always pray to God and say, God, you know, I've learned something. I would like to learn more. And God was, is more than happy, always happy to bless us liberally. You know what liberally means, right? <laughs> right? Like uh, when I, when I uh, any, anytime I go to the, uh, the pizza store or whatever, right, I ask him, can I have a liberal amount of uh, Parmesan cheese so I can put extra cheese on my pizza, right? Like liberal means extra you know, you're not, you're not stingy with it, right? God's not stingy with giving us wisdom. He wants us to be wise so that we can take care of ourselves and take care of others around us, you know. So we could always pray to God and ask for more wisdom, but there is a catch. God can't just make us all wise overnight. You know, sure, God will give us wisdom. God wants us to be wise, but it's up to us to earn that wisdom. Look at Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And starting in verse 21, starting in verse 21, and this is Jesus' teaching. Remember, this is Jesus' teaching. I'm going to hold off. See if this wind, God, will you stop this wind for a second, please? All right, I'm going to read this. Verse 21. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? And not to be set on a candlestick. For there is nothing hid which shall be which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Any man have ears to hear, excuse me, have ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus is saying here, you know, you don't, you don't light a candle and, you put, and put it somewhere that nobody can see the flame, right? Or make use of the light, right? You, nobody lights a candle and just hides it in the closet, okay? When you light a candle, you, you want to illuminate something or you want everybody to see the candle, right? Jesus is telling us, if you, if you have knowledge, you need to use it. You don't just take your knowledge and throw it in the closet somewhere, right? Don't keep it a secret. If you learned, if you learned about Jesus Christ, you got saved, you, you, you heard the gospel, you believed it, you need to share it with people. Go tell everybody. Go tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your family. 
like if you're just constantly reading the Bible all the time or going to church and hearing a Bible preaching all the time, and that's good. I understand that when you're beginning um, and you're just, you just need to learn. But if, you, if you're constantly doing that year in and year out, you know, and you're not using what you learn, you're not applying it to your life, you're not telling anybody about what you learn, you know, it can actually start to um, work against you, all that knowledge, right? Because the more knowledge you have, the, the more God's going to expect out of you, right? The smarter you get, the more wise you get, the more God's going to say, hey, what are you doing with all this wisdom? I gave you all this wisdom liberally. What are you doing with it? Right? Imagine if I ate all day long. I'm eating food all day long, right? And, 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 and for the sake of argument, I'm not eating junk food. I'm eating healthy food, fruits and vegetables. But I'm eating all day long, and I'm just laying down, and I'm sleeping, Right? I just wake up, eat, eat till I'm eat till I'm full, and then I go back to sleep. Right? Is that gonna be good for me? No, that's not gonna be good for me. And that's how the Bible is. That's how knowledge and wisdom work. You know, we need to constantly be eating knowledge, taking in the Bible, reading the Bible, and using that knowledge. And that's how we gain wisdom. Right? And I'm not saying you uh, it's not good to go to church and listen to the uh, Bible preached. I'm not saying uh, that you shouldn't watch my videos and listen to the Bible preached, but you need to apply these wisdoms, these truths to your life. You know, just like if I ate all day, you know, and then I went out and exercised, then I get stronger, right? Well, that's how the Bible is. Eventually, you know, when we learn and, and we go and apply it to our lives, we get wiser, right? But that's not to say, you know, sometimes we don't, we might not misuse our knowledge, right? You may learn something and then do the wrong thing anyways, right? Like every time do I, that I eat, do I go out and exercise like I should? No, I don't. I don't. But if, if I wanted to get stronger, I would need to do that, right? Well, let, let's finish this teaching uh, of Jesus in, in Mark. Start, uh, we're in verse 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Jesus is telling us that, you know, God is not going to just give us more knowledge until we have shown him that we are applying it, that, that we're using the knowledge he already gave us, right? He's not going to uh, teach you something. And then you say, all right, great. And if, if you didn't go uh, apply that and show that, hey, you learned that, you, you, you're using that wisdom, he's not going to give you more. He's not going to give you more knowledge, right? You see, and this is the beauty of, 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 of God, though, is wherever you're at right now, however much you know or however little you know, you can grow from wherever you're at. Wherever you're at, it doesn't matter if you're the wisest man on earth or or the full, the fullest of fools, right? You can always grow from there, you know. Whether you have tons of wisdom or a little bit of wisdom, God wants us to grow. Second Peter, chapter three, verse eighteen says, "Grow in grace. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." That's a commandment in the Bible to grow, to grow in knowledge. You know, we're commanded to grow in knowledge. Just like Jesus said in Mark, you know, you, you can't grow in knowledge until you take the knowledge you have and apply it correctly and turn it into wisdom, right? Then God will give you more knowledge. But here's the sad part, you know, Jesus did warn us that for he that hath to him shall be given and he that hath not from him uh, shall be taken even that which he hath. So in other words, Jesus is saying, hey, look, be careful about misusing the knowledge that God gave you. You know, if you read the Bible and you don't apply it, God can take that knowledge away from you. He says, oh, I gave you the knowledge. You didn't want to, you didn't want to uh, hearken unto it. You didn't want to obey it. Well, then I'm going to take it away from you. And I'm going to give it to somebody who wants it, right? God will do that, you know, because God, no, God knows that, hey, the more that he gives us, the more he expects from us, okay? Lastly, I want to say this. This is the last point I'm going to make. Let's say you get all this knowledge, okay? You read the Bible, you go to church, you hear all this preaching, you get all this knowledge. Well, what do you do with it now, right? What do you do with all this wisdom that you have, right? Colossians chapter 3. 
Colossians chapter 3 tells us what to do. So all these bugs, man. Uh, Where was I? Colossians chapter 3 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So what do we do with our wisdom? We teach and we, we admonish others. Admonish them. That means to uh, instruct them. It doesn't mean to make fun of them, right? And say, oh, oh, I'm smarter than you. Or, you're stupid. You don't know this, right? You don't belittle anybody, right? It doesn't mean to boast that you're smarter or you're wiser than anybody. It means that you live your life in such a way that others can just look at you and see the example that you're setting forth, Right? If you if you if you you know if you're setting a good example, that's great. And if somebody asks for help, okay, great. You can you can teach them. You can you can open up your Bible. You can show them the scriptures and teach them what it means, right? Or you know, if you see somebody struggling with something, you can gently, politely, and kindly, very lovingly, and as humble as you possibly can, go up to them and explain, hey. Can I help you with this? Looks like you're struggling. Right? And this is the hardest part about teaching. This is the hardest part. You know, you need to learn uh, to avoid the people who don't want to learn, first of all, right? You don't, you, you can't teach somebody who doesn't want to learn, okay? So um, don't, don't waste your time trying to teach somebody who just doesn't want to learn from you, okay? But rebuking somebody is one of the hardest things to do in teaching, Right? When you see somebody doing something wrong and you want to go correct them, you know, people don't take correction very easily. So this is very, you got to do this very, very carefully, very humbly. Okay? You see somebody doing something wrong, you, you want to get them on the right track, you have to do it very kindly and gently. And, 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 and here's the key. Do it with love. Do it with love. And what I've found is the best way to do this is to ask somebody questions. You know, people don't like when you just go up to them and, and you start preaching to them. Hey, you, you need to change this. You know, <laughs> like, no, no, no. Like, hey, you're doing it all wrong. Let me show you how it's done, right? No, no, no. That's, that's generally the wrong way. Now, there's some, sometimes you may need to do that if they're doing something really bad, right? But, but generally speaking, um, don't, don't just go up to somebody and start rebuking them and telling them they're doing it wrong. That's bad. If you want to teach somebody who, who hasn't asked for your help and you know you're approaching them, you know, like obviously you should be living by example, but if that doesn't work and you have to go up to them and talk to them, best thing to do is ask them questions. Say and be friendly. Be as friendly as you can be and say and ask them honestly, sincerely, why are you doing that? Why are you doing it that way? Ask them questions. You know, where did you learn to do that? Do you think that that's the best way to do that? And, 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 and don't do it sarcastically. Don't, you should not have a sarcastic tone of voice, right? And this is very hard to do. But sometimes, you know, you also have to be bold in telling people, hey, you know, did you know that the Bible says this? Right? And this is one of the hardest things uh, to tell people. You know, in, in, in teaching them and correcting them, you know, and, and, and gently going up to them and saying, hey, if you like, I could explain to you why I believe that you're doing something wrong here. I could show you from the Bible why I think it's a better way. This is how I do it. It's worked for me. You know, I used to do it that way. And then I learned this and I do it this way and it's much better now. It's much better. Right. Open up a dialogue. You know, and the thing is, you, you, you might actually learn something because, hey, we don't know everything. You know, sometimes you might be rebuking somebody and you might realize, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you actually taught me something, right? Because here's the thing. First Corinthians chapter 10 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. You know, you never want to get so high-minded that you think you know everything. You're Mr. Know-it-all. Oh, I know everything. I've read the Bible a hundred times. I, I go to church every Sunday. 
therapist. I'm gonna, I'm here to teach you. No, oh no, you get to that point, you're in trouble. You are in trouble, buddy. You ain't gonna teach anybody with that kind of mindset. So I'm gonna close by saying this. I don't want this video to go too long, guys. I'm gonna close by saying this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you're not gonna have any wisdom at all. You're just gonna be a fool. And all wisdom first starts and begins with knowledge. First you learn the knowledge, you learn the truth of God's word. And then you make the choice to take that truth, that knowledge, and apply it to your life correctly. That's when you have wisdom. Once you obtain that wisdom, what do you do with it? You teach others. You teach others how to do the same. You, you lead by example. And you may actually need to uh, have some boldness and talk to somebody. Have a conversation with them. Maybe correct them. Maybe they correct you. You may be able to you may, you may have to humble yourself so you can constantly keep learning. And, and that's my message for the day, guys. Wisdom versus foolishness and uh, how can we have wisdom. And anyway, I hope you guys learned something. And um, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this day. And God bless you guys. I'll see you on the next video. And um, as always, I'm going to give God the last word. So I'll be reading from uh, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. You guys have a great day. God bless. Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 9, the Bible says, and I'm going to wait for this book, sorry. Please, Lord, just let me finish this last verse, please. Okay, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist amen god bless